That was, of course, the dreaded dial-up modem, giving you as much as 14.4 kilobits per second of internet access capacity. But that was manageable in the 1990s because websites were simple, email attachments small, and video content either minimal or non-existent. Over the last 20 years or so, of course, broadband access speeds have increased greatly, and so has overall network traffic. Now, 5G is expected to launch a new wave of bandwidth-hungry applications. Also, fibre to the home rollouts are reaching users in areas further from centres of high population density. So we can expect new technology, new content and new users. How does that impact the global submarine cable network? It's clear that more capacity will be required across the world's oceans. But how do we deliver that whilst continuing to drive down the cost per bit for our customers? The first way we can do that is to maximise the number of fibre pairs we can put in a cable. Here at NEC, we're at 24 fibre pairs today. This solution is fully qualified and both the cable and the repeaters are now in mass production. The challenges to overcome in getting to that point were not trivial. We can't just keep putting ever more fibre into a limited space in the cable. It took a lot of optimization and qualification. Also, we had to solve the issue of fibre marking it's very important that all the individual fibres in a cable can be uniquely identified by a human during a splicing operation, so we had to refine our fibre colouring and marking process without impacting even slightly on the transmission properties of the fibres in the cable. OK, so far so good, but what about beyond 24 fibre pairs? The demand will surely come. Well, 30-something fibre pairs is within reach. Also, look out for news from NEC of further developments in SDM. To keep up to date with all these developments and to learn where in the world they are being deployed, visit nec.com forward slash submarine.